I'm sorry, I hate to say it, but yes, this Canadian's defenseman has to get traded. Also, should we be worried about Arbor Jacki? Worried about Arbor Jacki? What on earth is she talking about? Don't worry, we're gonna get to that in a minute. But first, this guy. Okay, we're talking defensemen, we're talking has to be traded. I know, obviously you're probably thinking, well, she's talking about David Savard because, well, that's an easy one, right? Yes, David Savard should be traded. But no, that's not who I'm talking about in this instance. Mike Matheson. Hear me out. I know, there is a large contingent of Habs fans who adore Mike Matheson, and they have every right to do so. Everyone seems to be super singing his praises this season. Give me just a minute, and I'm going to tell you why I think the Canadians would be better off trading him. But first, okay, let's take a look. Why why is everyone singing his praises this much? Well, okay, last year in 48 games played, Mike Matheson put up 34 points. He had eight goals and 26 assists. He's played 49 games so far this year, and he's already put up 34 points. This time it's in the form of seven goals and 27 assists. But let's look at some other numbers, like his plus minus rating. Mike Matheson is a minus 17 on the season so far. That is second only to Brendan Gallagher, who is minus 21 on the season. And don't get me started on Brendan Gallagher. He deserves that five game suspension and he's actually exceptionally lucky that it wasn't more than that for that hit. This is the first time since the COVID season, the first COVID season, the 2019-20 season, it's the first time since that year that Mike Matheson has had a negative rating. And it's not by a little bit, folks. It is a minus 17 on the season. You know why? Mike Matheson has been responsible for an egregious amount of turnovers. He has been a defensive nightmare when it comes to turnovers this season. And one of the ways you can see that is his plus minus rating. He is on the ice an awful lot of the time when the Canadians get scored against. How else is he hurting the team? Let's look at his penalty minutes. 42 penalty minutes on the season. That is fourth on the team right now. There are only three other guys ahead of him, including Brendan Gallagher and Arbor Jack guy, which aren't a surprise. That means he is putting his team in a shorthanded position way too often. And with a power play that isn't exactly the strongest special teams work you've ever seen. I know Mike Matheson is a likable guy. This is nothing to do with him personally. This is looking at the Montreal Canadiens at this point in their rebuild and what they need in the future. So if you like the numbers that Mike Matheson has been putting up this year, this is a case of sell. If you can consider this selling high, then sell while he's high. The defensive liability is starting to be a hefty price to pay for a guy who's going to be 30 years old next month. He's obviously not going to be a long-term solution in terms of the rebuild and the next chapter of this organization. But if we are being objective here, I'm sorry, but Mike Matheson should definitely be on the trading block for Kent Hughes this trade deadline. And I know you've got thoughts and feelings on why the Canadians should or should not trade Mike Matheson. So tell me what you think. Leave a comment down below. Should they trade him or should they keep him? Now, I know from the responses that we heard from all of you when Arbor Jacki got sent down to the AHL that a lot of you were completely outraged at that decision. So it came as no surprise that fans were elated when Arbor was recalled back to the NHL last week. But I don't know that fans should kind of breathe a sigh of relief about that situation just yet. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. But first, let's just review quickly how we got here. Jack Eye went out with an injury. He was gone for a little over a month. At the end of that injury status, when he was ready to go active again, he was sent to the AHL instead of being put back on the NHL roster. At first, people wondered whether or not this was just a conditioning stint, but it became very quickly obvious that it was not the case that he had been sent to the AHL to work on specific details in his defensive game. And we saw Arbor Jacki, after about a 
the first week or so settle into his new role. He did very well with Logan Mayu. He did very well with his game. He was putting up good offensive numbers while also being defensively responsible. He was staying away from taking too many egregious penalties and unnecessary penalties. And that kind of effort and work earned him the recall again after just about three weeks or so in the AHL. The Canadians have played three games since Arbor Jack I was recalled. He's played in two of them. No points in either one of those games, and he managed to take three penalties in those two games. And the ones that he took in the second game um, obviously got him in a bit of hot water. You saw his ice time get reduced uh, pretty significantly in that second game. And then you heard Arbor Jack I even uh, that night and the next day talk about how he even went to Marty St. Louis and Stefan Robida called the coaches himself and said, look, I took some bad penalties. I put the team in a bad position. Uh, I know that I can't let that happen. It's not going to happen again. I'm sorry. I'm working on it. They kind of said, don't worry, shrug it off. Uh, it's a new day. Go have a good practice. But the next day when the Canadians were set to play in Pittsburgh on Saturday night, Arbor Jack guy found himself watching from the press box as a healthy scratch. So I said at the top of the show, should we be worried about Arbor Jackeye? It'll be interesting to see which Arbor Jackeye comes back onto the ice after the All-Star break because I f quite frankly think that he is skating on thin ice right now. I think he's going to be on a short leash and I think it's obvious that the Canadians don't want to see him revert to taking bad penalties just because he can't kind of monitor that edge in his game and they want him to play the game that they sent him to Laval to work on that he seemed to be improving on. It's almost like he started to slip back into some old bad habits when he got recalled to the NHL. And I will be curious to see if he can rein that in and be more disciplined and focus on the things that he needs to do to stay in the lineup once All-Star break is over. Because if not, quite frankly, he could find himself back in Laval again. And with that being said, let me ask you this question. If they come back from the All-Star break and Arbor Jackeye finds himself either benched again as a healthy scratch or take it to the next level at some point in the not-so-distant future, finds himself back on the AHL roster, who do you believe would be to blame? Is this going to be the player's fault that he's not doing what the team needs him to do? Or would you lay this blame on the coaching staff? Leave us a comment down below. Speaking of the Laval Rocket, actually, you know, they had been like soaring pretty high throughout the month of January, going on a really nice long stretch of a regulation win streak, just absolutely soaring up through the standings. Well, unfortunately, this last weekend, they kind of came crashing back down to earth rather quickly. Granted, Arbor Jackeye isn't there anymore. Justin Barron is there, however. Uh, we're keeping an eye on how he's doing. He had an assist uh, over the weekend, even though Laval did lose two games. And despite those losses, doesn't have a negative rating yet. I believe he's at a zero on the plus minus through those three games played. So he's kind of playing a, a quiet game, which is what Justin Barron does anyway. Now, Barron and the rest of the Laval Rocket have three games to play this week before their all-star break. And I set the stage for what is at stake for them this week in three very critical games for the Laval Rocket in this video right here. And if you missed it, just click it, watch it, and I'll see you again next time.